Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Frenchy. I hope you're all well. We've got something different today, and it isn't the fact that I look like an animal because lockdown means I can't get a haircut. It is a tutorial kind of video. Um, so those of you who've been following me will know that I did a Moneyball save earlier this year, um, and a few people privately messaged me and asked me how I did it, asked me for the views that I used and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I, so I posted a comment in a few episodes before the end of the series, um, asking if you guys would like to see how I actually do it through a tutorial. And a few people said yes, I also got a good response on Twitter. So I thought, why not bring this to you? Because I think um, quite a lot of people have enjoyed the, the challenge this year. Obviously, data, um, one of the big things that was brought in FM21 was the new use of data. So I thought, why not use that and show you how I use it to run a Moneyball save? So the first thing we're going to do is boot up the game, obviously, and as you can see, I am here as the manager of Leicester. It is 2022, the end of the 21-22 season, so a season ahead. Nope, two seasons ahead. So two seasons in, this will be the third season coming up. Um, this is my Valencia save, so I've joined Leicester at the end of that save, just so I could do this video. Um, because they're in a bit, of a, a bit of a tricky time. We've got a testimonial, I'm not sure who for, but anyway. Um, so if we look at the Premier League last season, they finished 10th while I was off winning the Champions League, the League and the uh, Spanish Super Cup with Valencia. Um, so I thought they'd be a good side to take on because they're a bit uh, below expectations, uh, are struggling, they've got an ageing squad. So if we have a look at the squad, this is what this is the squad that I inherited. Um, so it's relatively a similar side. You've got uh, Soyuncu, Justin Schmeichel, and Didi Madison Tielemans, Pereira, Harvey Barnes and Vardy. So relatively... Um, known squad i thought there's quite a few places this could be improved i think jamie vardy needs to go sadly um i don't think he's quite up to scratch you can see he's 35 and if we have a look at his um stats if you just go here click attacking oh no nope. click attacking you can see his stats last season were not brilliant the team only scored around 1.4 goals per 90 and he created clear cut chances created 19 four assists 10 goals in all competitions, 52% shots on target, 0.3 goals per 90. So not amazing, not awful, but you know, I think probably 6.88 average rating. Probably someone who we can look to improve upon. So I thought maybe there's someone that we can improve and replace. So that's who we're going to be covering in the video. I also picked out Schmeichel and uh, the centre-back. But we're going to look at the attackers. So before you even get started in Moneyball, the first thing you want to do is you want to go to your staff tab and you want to look at your recruitment team. And you can see Leicester doesn't have a great one. I'm not going to upgrade it for this video, but I suggest you upgrade yours. You want this one to be the like league's best if you can do it. They're, they're quite good. Obviously, the Premier League is top caliber. You probably won't be likely starting to use this strategy in the Premier League because you look at taking a financial minnow to greatness. But you want to just get the analyzing data as high as you can. It's not necessarily about judging player potential or ability. You can use them, so you can go like half and half. You can not use the attributes. Obviously, you want to use the attributes for staff because that's not the same. But attributes for players, you could you could use their star rating because obviously that isn't perfect. That's based on your staff, so there is still room for error there. And you know, you could use that, or you could just use the like such as the recent skin that Foxy. Uh, Fox in the Box covered in one of his recent videos, the one where it just blows out the numbers, so you have the stats that they're good at. So like you could look at Jamie Vardy, you could, oh he's quick, oh he's got good mentals, that kind of thing, and you'd see the greens, the yellows, etc, etc. And you can use that, because that's probably more realistic, a scout will look at someone and go, okay, he's good in the air, he's quick, but he wouldn't be able to go, he's got 18 out of 20 passing, like that kind of thing. So I think you could probably use that and, interview and make it your own challenge. But that's the first thing I'd do and I'd recommend. So then once you've done that and you're ready to look, you evaluate the positions that you want to replace. So I want to replace a striker. Um, so I'm going to go to my scouting tab. So you can do it. You can obviously do it through just the regular scouting. You can set an assignment for strikers. And one of the things you can do, if I just go to assignments and show you this really quickly, I'm sure you've seen this. But if you haven't, that's, that's great. I'll show you right now. So I'm going to go to assignments obviously I can't so I need to go to my staff and set the responsibility to set assignments so once I confirm that then I go back to my scouting tab uh, I go to assignments and you can see create new assignments so say I want to look for a striker this is what I do if it was throughout the season so say we uh, in January I want to find a player um, so I want to transfer I'm going to say I want it for less than 30 million um, scope well I can pick whatever I just go for my scouting range I'd probably pick one of my so as I said you can you make a note of which players could analyze the data and you make sure, or you could just use, like I said, if you want to use a star rating, you could pick whatever. So I'd go for judging current ability, pick the best one for Peter Clark, you can do it, whatever. And then I'd look at that. Now, obviously you'd start that and that would find players who meet the criteria you want. Or you can do it this way, which is why I'm going to do it today. 
So I go to players, play search. This is a little bit cheaty and tend to look down upon. So I'm looking at the striker. So I'm going to pick striker at my positions. I want him hit in his peak. So between 26 and 29 is generally considered the early peak of a striker's career. And I want to make sure he's listed for transfer because we want a player who is going to be undervalued. So when a club is trying to ship a player on, they tend to undervalue him and you don't ex get ripped off. Uh, you could also change it and say, okay, I also want to look at expired contracts or I want to look at expiring in a month. Um, you can see there's one player there, but we've not got any data on him. I want to go, maybe I want to go non-contract um, or maybe even unattached. You know, you can do that if you so wish. I'm just going to leave it on anything and look at transferred players only. Click OK and you can see I'm greeted with a bunch of players. So I want these all the, this collection of players. Um, you can see there, there's a group of players there. I want only players who've played over 100 minutes. And you can see I've got this view. I've made this view myself. As I just realized it's not the correct view, so I'm going to import the correct view. Uh, so you can see I've, I've got a collection of views here. Um, I'd suggest making your own. I'm not going to be dropping any of these on the Steam Workshop or anything or to download yourself. I think you must make your own to get this right. But I'll give you a guidance on what I look for. So this is, I'm looking for a pressing forward. So I'm looking at the five crucial ones for all positions are their value, their wage, their age, their minutes, and their appearances. I think that gives you a good general um, gist of the type of player you need. I think they are really important. So then for striker, for pressing forward, I'm looking at shots per 90, shots on targets per 90, tackles, interceptions, distance covered per 90, because that gives you a good um, kind of image of how hard they work for the team. Um, assists per 90, chances per 90, XG, goals per 90, and goals finally. They're the group of attributes I look for pressing forward. Obviously, if you were looking for a different player, if you were looking for more of a target man, you'd look at aerial challenges, you'd look at goals, you'd look at maybe assists, um, you'd look at head of one ratio, those kind of things. You wouldn't look at tackles and interceptions because that's not too important for a target man, but that's what you'd look for for that. So obviously, you can have a player around, you think what, what, they, what their role encompasses, and you can probably work it out yourself. So I've got these groups of players. I only want to look at players who've played 200 minutes or more. So there's five there. I highlight them. I hit Control P on my keyboard, web page, hit OK. Um, and then I'd save it. So whenever you want to save it, you title it, whatever you I've already done that. So I'm just going to jump straight into my desktop now. So when I jump on my desktop, you can see I've got these little Chrome browsers and you can see they're named as I want. So then you go into Excel, you click open, you click browse, and then you find what you've just saved as. So I saved mine as Leicester City FC. Striker, money ball, money ball. Striker, I double click that. So when you do boot, open up that file, this is what you're greeted with. You wanna just get rid of the info tab. You also wanna get rid of the recommended tab because they have no use to you. Um, and then you wanna get rid of all the players that you don't want in your data set. So I set up to 200 bits, so I'm gonna get rid of all of them like that and just click delete. And then I'm gonna right click delete so it gets rid of all that. So you also wanna make sure that you change any dashes to zeros. So you um, you wanna get rid of the pound sign here. So you just click on that, change. All of these, these are set as currency, so I want to make sure this is number. Um, and then if I press Control F, replace, and then type P slash W for per week, because I don't want that coming up, so I'm going to replace all that. You can see that's done that there. And then valuation, I'm going to change these, so to million, like so. And then I'm also going to just format it. So I'll be with you once I've formatted it a little bit. So once I've formatted it, this is what it looks like for me. Um, once it looks like that, you can just do it here. You can leave it here. This is the end of it. And you can visually do it yourself by looking at all the different numbers, keeping those numbers in your hand. But I find that to be a bit difficult and a bit diff more difficult when you've got more than five players. I tend to do it with about 30 to 50 players. Um, but for this purpose, obviously we've only got five because we haven't had a couple months to scout. So these five players, you could do it here. But what I then do is I click Control S, Control Shift and S, Save As. Um, and when that eventually brings it up, Click save as, save it as whatever you want, and make sure you click this button down. So it'll current when you automatically save, it'll be as a HTML web page. You want to just save it as a web Excel workbook uh, .xlsx. So what you want to do next is you want to go download a program software called Tableau Public. Um, there'll be a link in the description. It's really easy. It's free. You just create an account um, for somewhere to host the different um, worksheets, but I think it's great. It is a software for visualizing and analyzing data. It's used by professional businesses quite often, obviously not Tableau Public, but the actual real software. Um, it's great. There'll be a video link in the description as well for a tutorial on how to do more with it than I'm going to show today. Um, and it's what I learned from. So once you've downloaded it, you just click connect to a file and then you find the file that you've just made. So there's my one. Um, and it will load up. Now, the great thing about Tableau is if I then go back into my uh, worksheet, 
I just click back here and I change, say I add another name. Tableau will automatically update it live because that's how brilliant it is. You just click this little refresh button and it'll automatically update the data points. So once you've loaded in that file, this is what you'll be greeted with. It's a screen of all your data. You then want to click down here to sheet one and you'll be greeted with this screen. Now this looks a bit confusing. You want to just make a few housekeeping changes first. So you want to drag age up into the dimensions tab at the top. So with appearances and minutes, value and wage. So then you also want to make your base thing. So I'm going to add a few of these to this marks here. So I'm going to put name is going to be text. I'm going to have value as a detail. I'm going to have wage as the color. I'm going to have minutes as the size and then appearances as a tooltip. So I then want to click on this wage button. I want to change this down at the bottom here. It says measure. You want to change that to sum. You want to do the same with minutes and value. I then also change automatic. I make it a circle because I prefer circles. I think they look great. So you can see then we then want to click minutes and change that measure to sum. Um, and you can see the more minutes they play, the bigger circle they have. And then that'll be the baseline. So I'm just going to duplicate that three times because I want to make three sheets. So then once you've duplicated those three sheets, you'll be left with something like this. You then want to drag in whatever options you're looking at. So I'm looking at striker. The first one I'm going to look at is I want to look how many shots on pin 90 has and his XG because I find there's quite a good correlation between them. And in doing so then, you can look at players who have a high XG. So for example, Billy or Marani or Kevin Lasagna have quite high XGs of eight and 11, or just around there. And they have a decent shots per 90. So Kevin Lasagna gets off between 2.2 and 2.4 shots per 90. Um, Omrani is somewhere around that two mark per 90, which is quite high. So an average, so to average eight XG from 36 games when he's taking two shots per game is quite all right. Um, Obviously, it's not a great uh, demonstration of his ability, but you can look at players. So players like Mattia Fenosho, who's getting a lot of shots for 90, but not of great, great quality. Great, great quality. So you can see that he's averaging 3.3 shots per 90 over 600 minutes. That's quite high. Uh, he's only averaged, he's only played 670 minutes across the season in 31 appearances, which is quite an astonishing number. So that means he's often off the bench. So his XG is expected to be lower, but he's averaging a lot of chances. And you could counter the fact, you could factor in that, in that he doesn't get a lot of XG because he doesn't play that many minutes. So you can work it out. You can kind of look at which would be a good fit for you. The second sheet then, I'm going to do, um, I want to look at his shots on target per 90 to goals per 90. And you can see this shows how clinical they are with the shots, the good quality shots and the shots on target. You could also do it if you wanted to look at shots per 90 instead. You could do that and you can see, you see a bit of a different one. So for example, where we said that Fernando didn't have a high XG, he's averaging the highest shots per game. So, so shots per 90 on 3.35 and averaging quite a high goals per game ratio. So we've got a 0.4 goals per game ratio. I'm going to then look at Kevin Lasagna, for example, who's a game goal every other game with two shots per game. So that's every four shots per nine he scores pretty much, which is an extortionally high number of uh, conversion to have 25% conversion rate is quite good um, for someone who, you know, you can see there he's not overly expensive. And we, do, for example, avoid Gerard Delafeo because not only is he the highest wage, he's the highest value and he's also the least Fin strong finisher out of all of this group. Uh, some of them do have low numbers, sometimes you just don't get the number, so we haven't got how many goals per 90, or he's not scored any. Sometimes you don't know the difference, you have to check in game. But I'm going to stick it on shots on target because I prefer that one. I can see how good of a chance they are getting per game. So per shot on target, he's scoring high numbers. So he have averages just under 1.4 shots on target per game and he scores every other game. So every three shots on target, he scores, which is brilliant. Again, players like Kisby Fella, for example, who has made 21 appearances, not made a lot of minutes in those appearances, but is averaging a high rate of success with his shots. And then finally, I'm gonna look at his pressing. So I wanna look at his interceptions per 90, but compared to his tackles per 90, and you can see Kisby Fella and Matteo Fenoto, high, high stats, two interceptions per 90 and two tackles per 90 nearly, um, for Mattia Finotto and Giuseppe Fella is just under that with 1.8 interceptions per 90 and 1.65 tackles per 90, 6.6. So again, some brilliant stats. And you can just stop here 
but I'm going to show you even further you can go. So then once you've compiled all your sheets, you can have as many as you want. I tend to go for around six or nine, as long as it's divisible by either two or three, that's fine. And then, so you want to just click down here, if you, in case you didn't catch that, this one here, new dashboard, and then just change the size, range, automatic. And you can see greeted with this blank page. I'm then going to drop my sheets in. So I want sheet one, I want sheet two, and I want sheet three to squeeze in the middle there. You can see we've got our key up here. And you can, again, leave it as is. So you can visualize all three sheets at once, but I'm going to take it further. So then you just click on one of these sheets. You've got a little menu box here. You want to click more options, click filters. And then I want to go to, well, let's go to some of minutes. And you can see we've got a nice little slider. So I say, I want someone who's got a good data set. So I'm going to go uh, for 750 minutes and that shrinks it down to three, but it only does it for that tab. If you want to apply it to all, you just click the more options, apply to worksheet all using this data source. Again, I want another filter, so I'm going to add another filter. Click on my sheet, more options, go down to filters. This time, let's say um, sum of value, okay? So I want someone who earns less than 45 grand a year. So I go 45,000. Oh, no. 45,000. There we go then. So you see that's narrowed it down to, again, just, you just click on the uh, filter, you click this little button, apply to all worksheets using this data source, voila. And then finally, I also want a legend uh, filter for sum of value. So I want to know who the most value is. I don't want to pay more than seven million, seven and a half million. So you just enter that, so that's 750,000, 7.5 million. There we go. So that's the two players that's recommending to me on those filters, looking at the different stats, I can compare them to each other. So the best presser of the ball is arguably um, Omrani because he gets more interceptions, which is more common tackles often don't re result in pressing but they're not the greatest presses so maybe okay well i'll sacrifice a few minutes then i'll have a look at 500 minutes and you can see that gives me four of the players so it rules out delafeo because he's obviously above our little valuation guide there so then we can compare them so say i want um what's the most important thing i want to know who's the best finisher that's the most important to me so we look at xg shots per 90 so matthew finato with a high number. You can see he's got 3.35 shots per 90 and he averages an XG of, of three. You also look at his shots per 90, um, shots on target to goals. You can see he's not the greatest because to be fellow, okay, maybe let's look at him instead. Not as many shots, not as high XG, less minutes though. So it kind of balances out. Um, and you can see then this is a good way when you've got, obviously when you've got say a hundred players or 50 players or 40 players, 30, 20, whatever, well, the more plays you've got, the better this is to use because it gives you a wider data set to work from. But this is just the basic, obviously, just demonstration. Um, so I'm, I'm going to look at it. I'm going to say, well, we've got Kevin Lasagna, who is valued at 17 grand a week, 4.8 million. Yeah, he's, he's, he's not too old. If we have a look, um, I realize his age doesn't come up. So if we just go down to the back, because I forgot to put his age in, as you can see here. So I'm just going to grab his age. And I'm going to put label like that. And you can see he's 29 and I'm just going to do that on all my sheets so that it goes through on the rest of them. So age there like that, go to my dashboard and you can see there then I can look at age. So they're all around the same age anyway. Um, maybe, maybe Giuseppe Fella would be the one for me. And I think that's what, it's either going to be between them. So then we look after the valuation. Well, he's 500,000. Jump back into our game and we'll have a look at Kevin Lasagna. So he's contracted at Udinese, he's 29. His contract ends next summer. He's listed. Uh, does he want to leave? He's listed for 4.2 million. Right, that's brilliant. We could get him 5 million for replacement. You know, he's not, this isn't something that works when you're building for the future. It's when you're trying to replace someone. You can see there 6.8 XG and he got 16 goals, 15 goals from 8.3 XG. I mean, that is astonishing. So I think he may be the person I might look who. Who else have we got? We've also back in on game. We've got Gisby Fella. So he plays for, again, he's in the, top tier he's in Serie A which is brilliant you know 500 mil 500,000 he's listed for 325,000 and his data shows that maybe he's someone who we could be bringing in and because of his valuation we maybe we make an offer bring him in and Kevin Lasagna so that we've got two players who could potentially make up for Jamie Vardy and that's how it works that's how the Moneyball strategy works you focus on the data you focus on getting the best bang for your buck and it is that simple. Obviously, once you've got past all the difficulty of trying to work out how to use the software, which is quite simple, there'll be description, the links in the description as well for a bit more of an in-depth tutorial on how to how to use it. But it's it's really helpful. Um, 
And I hope you guys, if you do go ahead and use it, go ahead, drop a comment. Let me know how you get on with it. Um, send me send me some tweets of pictures and players you find using this technique that, that end up doing well for you. But other than that then, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little bit of a different video today. Um, it was quite fun to make. Obviously, it's quite a tricky save. It's a, definitely a challenge uh, if you're up to it. Um, again, please feel free to let me know how you get on with it if you do decide to implement the strategy. Um, I'd love to hear from you all. But other than that then, I hope you have a wonderful day. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and click that notification bell to be notified when new videos go live. And other than that then, I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time.